the first video to touch the channel for 2021. 3MG stories. So much content to talk about. There's so much to tell. So much has happened. 2020 will never be forgotten. I want everybody to sit tight. Enjoy this one. Soak all this in. There's a lot of personal, but also just, wow, what a fucking year we had. This pandemic caused so much, so much suffrage, so much pain. It brought a lot of positive and brought a lot of light to situations that we've been ignoring for years, including myself. But across the globe, this pandemic has hurt all of us. It's taken away our role models, our heroes, our families, our loved ones, our friends, our jobs, our security. It's almost like entering the military and when they beat you down figuratively to kind of rebuild you to become the person you were always meant to be. Sort of like making a bunch of mistakes and finding yourself and creating that new path in your life that you just planted throughout all these mistakes. Because every mistake we've made or make in our lives are normal, just little seeds that we just plant so that when they grow, they grow into new opportunities, new chances at life, new beginnings. 2020 was a fucking crazy year. Everybody who's here watching, God bless each and every one of you. I hope you're doing well. Hope your family is doing well, your loved ones, your friends, your pets. I hope everybody is stable financially, health-wise, mentally, physically, emotionally. 2020 was a fucking rough ass year, but also brought some real light and some real positivity to some of our lives. In this story, I'm going to talk about it. For those who have not kept up with me, I've put on tremendous amount of weight. Look at this face. Look at my face. Look at me. I put on crazy weight. If you've been rocking with me for all these years on all these platforms, you would know I used to work at a hospital. That was like one of the biggest things that has happened to me in my life. That was the biggest opportunity that I was that I was given uh, the luxury or given just the opportunity to be in a part of is that hospital. I no longer work there. If you have not kept up with everything that's been happening, I left that job due to not only COVID, but because of a lot of, you know, unprofessionalism that was happening in that workplace. In today's episode, we're going to talk about how COVID really just set me up. Now, was it for the better or for the worse? You guys can go ahead and be the judge of that towards the end of this video. But let's really talk about it. So for those who've known me for all these years on YouTube, Twitter, and all these other platforms, you guys know that I couldn't be full time on YouTube due to the fact of my restrictions at work. You know, I worked at a hospital, Mount Sinai Hospital to be specific, to be exact. Um, I worked in patient care towards the end of my, you know, job sessions there. I used to be in security in that hospital and then I had soon switched over and I've been working at that place for like seven, eight years. Some of the greatest experiences ever in life was working in that hospital. I've learned so much about people. I've learned so much about life. I learned so much about the body, our body, the anatomy of our body, learning and understanding how temporary our bodies are and how we are the ones who kind of engineer our bodies to be in the position that we are in today, physically, emotionally, mentally, and health wise. It's very important to take care of yourself. We are the ones who engineered and when the wheels fall off is when we're done. It's just a reality. So I appreciate every moment of being in that workplace where I've learned so much. The people that I've met, the souls that I've encountered with, the amazing people that I've met, I'll never regret it. I'll always be grateful for it. Unfortunately, you always come across certain people in this environment who seem to feel like they're more entitled, whether they're your boss 
whether they're co-workers who feel how do you have this opportunity and you get paid almost the same as me but i feel like i'm more qualified than you so much shit has happened and i've put up with it for a long time you know i've always felt labeled you know due to how i look having tattoos the slang the way i talk the way i speak to people but one thing this job taught me was it doesn't matter how i look what color i am you know the way i approach things if i'm professional i can go ahead and treat my patients with care and they're happy that's all that fucking matters to me nobody's gonna take that shit away from me that's all that matters i'm not gonna allow somebody to control me in an environment which is free open as long as you do your job and patient care is number one that's what matters so last year was really just that end point for me you know i think it was around march let's really get into it for those who remember january hit we started hearing words about this this virus or this sort of like corona that was hitting and it hit like in wuhan and it was just oh, i forgot where forgive me it was like wuhan and it was just this crazy outbreak and you know everything was being ignored we were still traveling we were still partying all the bullshit that was going on and i remember like during pax if everybody remembers pax it like it was me and my boy bg and we flew out to Boston. well we didn't fly we went out to boston for the event at that time was when i realized wow how serious this was because they told us when we get back we need to be like i guess you know in our homes for 14 days and i'm just like 14 days whatever that's fine with me okay once you know coming home when i finally was able to get back to work i only worked two days since i came back from pax east and i just remember seeing everybody the commotion people wearing masks people just scared and i'm just like what the fuck happened it's it was just weird it was like one day it, it, it made me it just reminded me of the movie i am legend like i literally just sat there i woke up the next day life was happening souls were just beautiful people just living life and then the fucking next day just bodies are dying and people are just dying everywhere and just we hear from the numbers a thousand ten thousand twenty thousand and it was just what like fucking ridiculous bodies being put into hospital bathrooms being put into u-haul trucks because there's not enough you know space to keep the deceased like it was just i couldn't fucking take it one major thing i heard about was the health hazards and just you know the low percentages of people surviving off of this crazy ass disease this fucking flu or whatever the fuck it was at the time and you know being that you know i work in a hospital those were the people who was catching it the most so i was like you know what man i don't feel comfortable here you know i don't feel comfortable here and i was just like fuck you know my mom's gonna be scared out of her ass because you know she works for the board of ed but you know she she's just worries about health and everything that's happening with me and herself um and it's just not something that you want to keep you know reminding yourself every day going to work but you know i was putting up with it it was up until i realized that you know certain co-workers you got to understand i can work side by side with anyone but that doesn't mean that i don't know who's a fucking asshole and who's the person that like who's probably miserable and brings their problems to work i understand everything that goes on at a workplace i also understand that some managers you know they micromanage and they do too much and they tend to make people feel like they're less than and that was that was something that i was actually struggling with at my job after one of my previous bosses had retired which was a blessing in disguise like she was just a blessing she reminded us of, of, of like a mom figure who just respected us wholeheartedly and felt like everybody had a family so all she wanted to do was give people hours to work so that they can go home and have holiday Christmases with their families and not be struggling with money because they weren't able to work certain hours and get paid good money. No, she was always there for everybody. Easy to work with. If people wanted switches, as long as somebody was covered, she was there for it. She was very workable. You're like, she was so loving. And then all of a sudden, the one who we kind of didn't have a, you know, a, a life for ended up taking over. I've always had a problem with this specific individual and I'm not going to say any names. No point. I wish that I wish that woman well, too. God bless her. And I hope everybody a part of that department is doing well right now, because I understand it's still a pandemic going on. You know, this woman who had took over 
she was already covering other site floors but now you know she's covering the whole units uh and although they hired other managers she's still overseeing everything you know ev every decision that was made she still had to look at it make sure everything was clean and every time i put in for vacation days to put in for a day off to switch with other co-workers just something so i can benefit myself and my family outside of work i was always getting denied you know i was one who wore a hat i wore a jacket with my uniform but that's because of the way i carried myself once a doctor would talk to me once i would talk to a patient they realized how professional i was to the point where that didn't even matter to them and they would always vouch for me for like hey leave leave ricky alone like he's good and yes i had my moments there was period of times where i've been lazy i've gone to work and i was just tired because i was too busy trying to beat a game to talk about it during the podcast or i was trying to record for a video and i was just up all night writing ideas yes there was times like that yes i'm not perfect but I sure as hell was not someone who should have been looked at as a person who was a liability. Absolutely not. Or else I would have been got fired or I would have gotten a write-up. And that has never happened before. I was always on time. But you know what happens when you start dealing with people or higher-ups who feel like they're better than you, they degrade you, they belittle you. They just like, they give you such a hard time. Their work ethic, that shit reflects onto you and you start, you know, acting just like them. So I started coming to work late too. And, you know, even though it's my responsibility, but that shit took that drive away from me. That took that passion away from me with the job. That took the love that I had for the job away from me. It didn't take away, you know, any memories. It didn't take away all the knowledge that I've learned, but it just took away that drive to just come to work. It just took that away from me. So realizing that this pandemic was happening, it was a scary sight. And this woman who took over our unit always like outed me every she outed me and a couple of individuals every time something happened she always looked to screw my unit over and try to take me away from my unit put me in floors where i did not belong where i had no experience um she tried to pull me in different places there was times i didn't get paid for the extra hours that i've done there was times she would even call us at like 11 or 12 in the morning like 12 midnight and just tell us hello be here at seven in the morning like and we're like demanded like who are you you don't talk to people like this i have a union you know what i'm saying i have a contract i work certain days a week specific days a week and she's to try to order us like i don't want to try to demonize her or make it seem like she was the worst but yeah she definitely mistreated a lot of us and anytime she didn't pay us correctly she would try to use patient care as an excuse oh why you care so much about that when you should worry about patient care and that's not the point we all have families we come home to and the simple fact is this, regardless of the situation, I come to work, I do my hours, and whether I clock out late or not, it's your responsibility to give me my pay that I deserve. There's a lot of unfair treatment. There was times I had doctor's appointments. You know, I had hurt my back on the job. The reason why I can't work out the way I used to, the reason why I lost drive and being so athletic and built like I used to is because I got hurt on the job and disrupted like one of the discs, I guess a disc herniated disc. I don't know how to fucking pronounce it. And I had to take off to do physical therapy on certain days. And she would even give me a hard time with that. Like there was so much that was happening. But again, back to the pandemic. So mind you, I'm already, I'm already struggling going to work, waking up at four or five in the morning, knowing that I'm about to have a 12 hour shift of just bullshit. And I, this is why I love my coworkers so much. They've helped me get through these days. They've helped me get through so much of these days because I know we all felt it. Working at a hospital, it looks like a blessing when you watch Grey's Anatomy, but that shit is tough. You know, it ain't it ain't roses. It's a tough ass job. And anybody who tries to sit here and try to make it seem like, oh no, it's easy. You know what? Then I salute you. I, you know what? Kudos to you. But it's still a tough job. You know, you going in there to a, a bacteria infested workplace. You're trying to help people. You're trying to make sure that everyone's lives when they enter and, and exit the building is at least at a satisfaction as something pleasable, something that you can feel good about because you've helped somebody, you know, from their day, whatever they were going through the day before. So the fact that we had to make sure that that was our priority, patient care, that was our priority. You know, that was number one. That's a tough job dealing with like, you know, patients who suffer from depression, schizophrenia, and bipolar and just so many other diff different things, whether if it's HIV, just we dealt with so much violent patients too. So the last thing we need is, you know, higher ups 
mistreating us. So mind you, that, that was already something I was going through. Now, with this pandemic, I told you guys, she always outed me. Every time they needed somebody, instead of her looking for one of her uh, co-workers or one of her, like, I guess, employees from her floor that she had so much extra, she decided to pull me where we was always short because once you pull me, you're missing somebody now and we don't have enough people. My unit was small. She even she didn't even want to pay people overtime to come into work, knowing that there's a pandemic going on. So those last two days, I heard they're going to float Ricky, and that means they're going to transfer me to a different um, area of the hospital. I was an EMT emergency room technician, but I also worked in patient care for psychiatric patients. Mind you, my unit was next to the ER, but we, but we was not in the emergency room. She wanted to pull me into the emergency room that I have zero experience. The woman who hired me put me immediately in psychiatric and in, in, in patient psych. She never put me in the ER. So I don't know anything. I don't know how to set up those things. That's not my job function at all. And she tried to place me there because she didn't want to put her people. So now my anxiety is going crazy. I'm shaking inside. I'm like, what the hell is going to happen to me? Why the fuck is she going to do this? I already knew what was the plan. So immediately once I went home that night, I called out, didn't come back to work. It was already like what, like March 3rd or something. And then I virtual, I had to do a virtual call with my doctor. And I told my doctor, listen, I'm not feeling well, which I was not at all. And I also have asthma, please. And she signed me out for weeks, for weeks and weeks. And I just kept hearing, you know, a little birdie in my ear. Somebody kept calling me, kept contacting me saying, yo, Rick, be careful. Cause this, she never liked me. She never liked a couple of us either. And her words, you know, from what I used to hear from people was, you know, one more act and, I, and I'm gonna get them out of here and I can't wait. She didn't want me to be there. She didn't want some of us to be there. Not at all. So when I heard that, I said, fuck, and this is going to be her outlet. This is going to be her way to get me. She's going to use this shit against me, knowing how scary this shit is. Yeah, I know there's thousands of people that work in this facility, but you're about to pull the one who has zero experience in the ER and you're going to hold me accountable for that shit. Meanwhile, we have tons, hundreds of other employees who have experience and you're not thinking about pulling them. You're going to pull me. Well, I already knew it was a setup. So I kept hearing Ricky, you know, she's looking to fire you. She's looking to suspend you indefinitely. She's looking to do these things, man. Yo, be careful, man. Don't lose your job. This is a good job. And mind you, you know what goes through my head every day? You know what goes through my fucking head every single day? Wondering where the fuck am I going to be when I'm 30 years old? Am I going to still live with my mom? Am I going to be in like my 18th relationship? Am I going to have six, seven kids? Am I going to be the same, the labeled as a Puerto Rican kid who doesn't have shit and who works at a $7 an hour security job? The shit that just caused so much stress upon me. The shit that just made me sad every fucking day. That shit that caused me to cry all the fucking time at night. But I couldn't tell people that shit. I couldn't tell nobody that I would fucking cry at night for no fucking reason. And whenever I did think of why am I, why is this happening? It's because I was contemplating like, where the fuck am I going to go at? Like, where am I going to be in life? Like, I ain't shit. That was my whole model. Like, I, I'm not shit. So, yeah, this job meant a lot to me because it took me out of that label. It made me feel like I am somebody. I never thought YouTube or Twitch or Facebook or something was going to be my outlet. You know, because I never felt or believed that I was going to ever be one of those lucky people. So to see that this woman was didn't give a fuck. And she was going to take me out of this job. I really was just in a back and forth motion. Like, what am I going to do with myself? March passed and then April hits. And that's when the pandemic was going fucking crazy. Thousands, 20,000s, 10,000s, bodies, just people dying, funeral homes. You can't even have your family there. Only one person. You can't even bury your, your family members or your loved ones the right way because this pandemic is so fucking bad. People can't even travel back to their homes. People lost their jobs. Teachers are gone. Some students won't make it back home. That's the saddest shit to think about when this pandemic is, is over or if it ever if it ever goes away or it gets a cure or a treatment. 
that when you go back to work, you won't see the same faces that used to make you laugh and smile. When you go back to school or university, you don't see the same professor no more because why? They didn't make it. So I resigned. April 7th, a week after my birthday. I said, I have to do this. You know, I, I didn't, I did a great job at saving money. So I knew I could, you know, hold myself down for like maybe a whole year on um, paying bills and doing and really focusing on passions that I've had, interests that I've had, interests that I, I felt like, you know what, let's take a shot at it. And I remember I just wrote a big letter to my new manager. He was a, he was a, he was a nice guy and he tried his best to be there for us. But that woman, she just overseen everything and she just didn't want to hear it. But he was like, listen, it sucks to see you go. God bless you. You be safe. I said the same. I contacted a lot of my coworkers. I emailed that woman too. And I told her, God bless. I wish her well. So much love to the unit. You know, because I have no hate in my heart. But you know what? It just sucks because you get looked at as just, oh, this one kid. I don't know how he's going to make it. You know, I heard, I heard when I left, someone said, you know, I think the nurse practitioner, I ain't going to say names, was saying, I don't know how you're going to make it in the workplace. How did how did he even get hired here anyways with all these tattoos? I'm shocked he even made it this long. He had another woman who said, uh, I feel bad for him. Good luck on trying to find another job looking like that. Because why I had long curly hair and I had tattoos and shit. Really? It was a Jewish woman who said that. So that's this is where we at. This is this was my reality. This was me accepting that yeah i'm a puerto rican kid 28 years old now you know and this was gonna happen to me i was gonna be one of those i've always respected people i've always showed so much love to my friends to my loved ones and anybody who i've ever been toxic towards whether if it was a relationship or whatnot i've never meant to be that way you know things maybe ha has happened that i never forgave or things happened that i just felt like was done to me wrong and i may have treated them wrong after that but I want to just say I have amazing people in my corner. I remember it was like April 10th or something. And me and PG just spoke and he was just like, yo, call me. And I just called him up and I said, bro, man, I'm proud of you, bro. You're going crazy. You growing. And we was just talking. I said, bro, help me. Yo, man, put me on, bro. And he was just like, we was just talking about you. And if y'all don't know who I'm talking about, I'm talking about physical gamers. And I remember he was just like, bro, we was just talking about you, me and Dante saying like you going crazy on youtube with the live streams yo you averaging crazy views like that's so cool on your live streams but you need to come to twitch and i said twitch damn man i've been out of twitch for four years man i said but bro help me man i'm scared man you know i don't work at the hospital no more it was either i come back and get fired or you know kiss ass and try to stay in this and he was just like you know what well, i'll call you tomorrow at 11 in the morning i said all right no problem, man. 11 in the morning hit. We got into a phone call. He just gave me all the details, things that I should do, what I should and should not do, how to move around things and said, yo, I got you, my boy. And I told him like, yo, you know, you don't have to do this, bro. He was like, nah, I got you. I got you. You're a funny ass guy. You're a good dude, Rick. Like, I remember us back in the days when we used to play H1 and that shit just brought me to tears. He don't even know it shit brought me to tears when we was on the phone i just said fuck man let, like like let something like let something happen to me like let something you know good happen to me because fuck i can't i don't know what i'm gonna do next and so i just remember it was april 16th 16th or 17th no april 15th actually 15th or 16th um and i'm streaming with him call of duty him and, and v cruising and i just got a gifted sub and I, after that i got another sub and cruz says something i was like yo don't worry watch them gift you like a hundred and i don't know what it was about that energy that people was just vibing with me and they just started going crazy and then you know thank god man you know gmg chase always had my back man trade ipod raunchy can they always had my back they just didn't know everything that was going on you know, they didn't know a lot of the shit that was happening to me behind the scenes. They didn't know like the financial struggles. They didn't know about the financial trouble. They didn't know all the sacrifices that I've made. And so 
seeing that they always been there for me and been like the outlet to like a lot of where I'm at now. I'm just forever grateful for that shit. We built such a crazy fucking community on there. And now today I can say that we 20K strong on Twitch. We're partnered and Twitch has been my full-time career. I'm also partnered on Facebook. That's been my full-time career as well. But I can't sit here and say that I'm satisfied because I'm not. This made me so scared. I put on like 30, 40 pounds during COVID, but it's all good because I understand I've been working and busting my ass. I'm busting my ass, man. I also want to say that I'm moving in the next two months. I'm happy about that. I'm able to now financially get my house and just financially feel secured enough to say that I can take care of my moms. This should take care of my family members, take care of my brother if I have to, take care of my nephew. This has been such a blessing. This year, 2020, was fucked up, but it brought me such a blessing at the same time. Thank you guys. You guys are the fucking truth. I swear to God, you guys are. But I'm not satisfied. YouTube has always been my home. I need this channel to go up to 100K. I need to hit these goals. I need everything to hit the way I want them to hit. Want them to hit. I want to bring back my fitness. I ain't gonna lie to you. I've been doing very minimal fitness 2020 in 2020. I did very minimal fitness as you guys can see here, very minimal, but you know, I don't care because everybody sees what I was focused on. And that was just growing, making sure I have a very tough, very respectful community, a very fun community of people. If it wasn't for you guys, I wouldn't be here right now in this situation. I never felt so comfortable with myself. I used to lack so much confidence physically. Twitch allowed me to become me. I'm more comfortable with myself. I remember hearing Trey tell me, yo, man, yo, you're a funny fucking guy. Just be you on your videos. You don't need to put on no act. And I, I just didn't know what that meant. I didn't know how to process that. I didn't know how to do it. I felt like every time I make a fucking video, I got to be somebody else. Twitch really helped me just be me. I don't give a fuck to be me. I don't care how professional, unprofessional I sound because I know the content is there and I know what I'm talking about and I'm going to make it as fluid as possible so that you guys can understand. I'm so much more confident. Now. I met amazing people on this platform. Thank you guys. So yeah, COVID ended up being, uh, it turned around for me, ended up bringing some, like some, ha some positivity to, to my life. Um, but more so it just allowed me to gravitate to more people, meet new faces, God bless each and every one of y'all, man. You know how I do it. We do talks all the time on Twitch, you know, but it's time I go back to YouTube. So y'all going to see more of this. I'm just looking for editors, but that's my story. This is the reason why I'm here now full time. And who knew this would have been a blessing in disguise. This pandemic really set me up. So you guys could be the judge of it. Was it for the better? Or was it for the worse? All I know is everybody, please wear your mask when you go outside. I think Florida don't give a fuck. They're out here partying with no mask and shit, dancing bachata and shit. I'm like, what the fuck is going on? Why y'all doing this shit? Y'all out here wilding the fuck out. Arizona getting suntans with no mask. Like, y'all don't give a shit over there either. Atlanta, y'all over here partying and shit with no mask. It's just bad. You would think New York is on the top of the list, and it's really not. Don't take this shit lightly, man. Shit is serious. It's getting worse. God bless everybody, man. Please take this time to really just find, you know, your, your safe place, your peace, create content. If you have to find new passions, find new hobbies, I talk about this all the time on Twitch. Let's get this motherfucking channel to 100 K. That's our goal. Follow me on all social media, even a TikTok. We're going to go crazy on that bitch, but I'm out of here. God bless y'all. Make sure everybody is safe. Don't let anybody tell you, you can't do shit. Cause that means dang shit. Peace out.